One of South Africa's greatest sporting victories was recently almost ruined for me by a software failure. I'm of course referring to the Rugby World Cup. South Africa's opening game against the mighty All Blacks, the defending champions. I was so looking forward to it. I'm not a huge rugby fan, but I mean, this is the World Cup. I planned out my whole morning. I brought, bought some biltong, I chilled some beers, I even had my hair cut. I was running a little bit late because apparently the, everybody decided to get, they wanted to get their hair cut for the first game, so the barbers were super busy. But I rushed home, uh, turned on the DCV Now app, and while I was waiting for the game to start streaming, opened a beer. And then I was met by the following screen. Now look, it's not all bad. Like they say, I can just come back in a few minutes, maybe after the game's done. Well, I'm sure I can find something else that justifies day drinking. They ruined the game for me. How is this possible? How much time did they have to prepare to stream this game? In this specific case, it was the team's fault. It wasn't the code's fault. No servers exploded. Can't blame load shedding. Because according to DSTV, their login system failed to scale. Which is why I couldn't, couldn't get in. What, what should be the consequence of this? Should, we, should they be fired? No. Maybe some mild disciplinary action might be in order. I'm just, I'm just saying. The point is that your team matters. You need to cultivate a team to reduce crushing defeats like this and increase the frequency of soaring victories. And the first step in building that team is to hire the members of that team. You would never uh, hire the first 10 Java developers that walks in your door with 10 years more than 10 years experience without any tests? No. I believe in crafting your hiring process painstakingly, taking it seriously, as serious as you take your business to be successful. As an aside, the DCTV Now team did fix their, their uh, problem and they were able to stream the rest of the games uh, of the World Cup without any incident. Hi, I'm Peter, and the last 18 months I've been the dev manager at Cars at Coza. At Cars, we're busy with a lot of things. We're constantly we're in a very competitive market, so we're constantly upping the ante, improving the technology, improving the user experience. We're in the process of rebuilding our whole front end now uh, with, uh, with React and, and, and Next.js. Uh, Dan Amber is giving a talk on that in the next session, I believe. But we do all of this currently with just five developers. And to power this company forward, I realized that we needed to hire more devs. I needed to figure out who to hire, where to hire them, how to assess their talent. So in the last year, we've uh, reviewed, I've re reviewed um, 250 CVs, did 130 screening calls, sent out 109 uh, technical assessments. We did 12 face-to-face -face interviews and we hired two devs. Now, our process is far from complete, but I do believe that we've learned some valuable lessons that can definitely help you succeed in the tech space. Before I get there though, I wanna sh share this uh, shocking stat from uh, LinkedIn. They did a, um, a talk last year, um, the digital talent landscape in South Africa. And they reported that last year, sort of year on year, when they, when they did their presentation, 11, over 11,000 digital talent professionals immigrated. And I can guarantee you it's not the bottom 11,000. Okay. So to help us understand what we're up against, I want us to look at one of the hiring powerhouses. Um, if you, if you um, have not been spammed by this company, you know somebody that has been there for an interview, or you know somebody that knows somebody that currently works there.
travel is changing. See? At Booking.com, we're changing it. Come work with us as we expand horizons and build the platform to book it all. From accommodation to transportation. Oh, that explains the steering wheel. To attractions and beyond. Pushing limits isn't easy. And that's why we need you. It's better. We're exploring bold new ideas to create exciting innovations. Together, we'll code the future of travel. And still find time for ping pong. Teach that machine a lesson. Fail! We love travel. We really love travel. And we want to make it easier for everyone. Nice catch. But we're more than just a company. We're a team and a community that cares, working together and having fun while we do. By the way, these weren't actors. They're your future colleagues. So, of course, I'm talking about Booking.com. They've got... Uh, over 15,000 employees, 2,000 engineers, and 660 vacancies current, currently, and you think you have hiring problems. So Booking.com's hiring process in a nutshell. Step one, one of the in-house recruiters will contact you on LinkedIn. Step two, they do a quick screening call. Step three, a real-time online dev test with uh, one or two of the engineers. Face-to-face -face interview in Amsterdam, so get your passport ready, and then you receive an offer or not within a week. I believe there is three steps to a good hiring strategy. The first step is you have to have a killer job spec. The second is you need to know where to meet people, and the last step is the interview process itself okay so let's start looking at what you require to get a killer spec so the first thing what's the first thing you do when when someone tells you okay cool write a spec for a job you go and you dig up some old document somewhere that's in like an old word format that needs to be converted to the you know like a compatibility mode uh, just so you can view it uh, or maybe you don't even have a spec. So you ask HR and they send you the one they use to hire the barista. Or if you luck out, then maybe you get one that's actually for a technical position, maybe Flash Engineer. And you go, find, replace, Flash with React. Uh, review, okay. Uh, the soft skills look good. Uh, save and send. So how much time did you spend on this? versus how much time do you spend on the rest of your process. This is the start of your hiring funnel. So don't mess it up. You can't filter or fix it down the line. No, what you need is you need a killer job spec. Okay, three parts to a killer job spec. The requirements, the fit, and your story. Let's start with requirements. The booking way is no qualification requirements in technical job listings. How many of you mention job listings, uh, uh, qualifications in your job listings? How many of you that mention that do not give a candidate a test? If you don't give them a test, then luckily you're not a hypocrite. The booking way is, like I said, no qualification requirements in there because qualifications is not skills. There's been an explosion of programming qualifications, certifications, boot camps, and online courses. So with some of these, the, the graduates walk out with more experience, practical experience, than what you get in a lot of degrees. Uh, Office Zen's uh, 2019 uh, State of the South African Software Developer Nation uh, has a stat that says, there's very little difference between the earnings of someone with or without a qualification. That means that they are able to do the same job. So be careful that you don't filter out a lot of your candidates based 
on how they've actually acquired their skills. Another thing we can learn from booking is that they don't typically have duration-based requirements. In, for instance, they might have one for a principal team lead that says 12 years plus uh, of software development experience with a minimum of three years in the lead or architect role. Instead, they prefer capability-based requirements. For instance, proven hands-on experience in designing, building, improving and operating high performance, highly scalable, uh, highly available and scalable apps in a fast growing environment. Or this one, strong understanding of object-oriented programming languages, Android fundamentals, architecture, components, and best practices. I mean, how long does it actually take you to learn a new programming language? Let's be generous, let's say six months. So what does two years JavaScript experience actually mean? Is it two years JavaScript experience or is it six years JavaScript experience repeated four times? Real experience is based on capabilities, not just time. Let's say you hire a React expert, somebody that can just hit the ground running with little on-ramp. We, we all want those people. But what happens when the React work dries up or when you just need some API work done? Will your React expert be able to mix things up? When evaluating experience, I want you to look past languages and frameworks. Does the candidate uh, have the candidate demonstrated the capabilities required for the position you're trying to fill? For instance, an immediate uh, intermediate dev should be able to work on independent tasks on a project with little oversight, where a senior dev should be able to design and deliver whole projects from scratch. Your stacks change, but your capabilities grow. The next important point I want to make about the killer spec is fit. The booking way is to attract like-minded individuals that love challenges, welcomes changes, think like an entrepreneur, and use data to drive decisions. On a side note, like-minded doesn't mean the same. Booking is a very diverse workplace. The thing is, technical skills are great, but if but you have to work with each other. If the candidate doesn't fit in with your culture, it's going to cause stress and a high churn rate in your team. But what is what your culture actually? Is it work hard, play hard? Who will actually fit in with your culture? There's no one best culture. Just compare the cultural differences between Amazon, Google, Facebook, Microsoft, Apple, and Oracle. They are all successful, but have very different cultures. They value different things. They approach things differently. That is a picture of that pretty much represents our culture. And that's one of our co-founders uh, on the board there. At Cars, we've invested in figuring out what our culture or core values are. And we've identified the critical competencies required for Dev to be successful at Cars. And these core values start to give you a little bit of a glimpse of who we are as a company, which ties nicely in to my third point of what makes a killer job spec and that is your story what's your mission what's your dream take your time to really explain to the candidate what your company is about why should somebody work for your company this is a chance to really stand out from the crowd and make sure people get excited about this opportunity compare this that you often see like recruiters send you this, this type of message uh, you would be building new solutions in the financial industry, okay? With this one, there's a company called, you guessed it, Molly. Uh, and on their careers page, their pitch is, everyone has the right to grow big, join the future of payments. That's way more exciting, right? And by the way, that's their founder uh, and the Stormtrooper mask. So for cars, um, I like to mention that because we're one of the top 20 busiest sites in, sites in South Africa, you get to work at scale and do cool things like A-B tests. 
because we're a small team, you get to experience everything and go um, from collaboration with the product team through to building, testing, deploying, and monitoring uh, um, our systems in production. And this is truly excellent experience for a dev just starting out their careers. Or if you're an, an inspiring, aspiring entrepreneur, you can work alongside successful entrepreneurs. Let's sit a few desks from you. Cool. So for killer job spec, we've covered uh, what you need to put in your requirements, how to figure out, or that it's important to figure out uh, what you're about so that a candidate can fit with you, and what is your story. You need to be able to communicate that. Cool. The second uh, uh, step for a successful hiring strategy is meeting people. So you've got your skill spec down. Now what? Where do you send it? I think we have three options here. Being set up, speed dating, and just meeting somebody. So let's look at being set up, aka recruiters. So probably this doesn't make anybody too excited. But the fact is that plenty of great candidates are still being sourced by recruiters every day. More than half of our dev team uh, came through the recruiters. So that's uh, three if you've been um, keeping track in this talk. Um, so some thoughts from my side on recruiters. Rather than um, you know using all the recruiters that you can find or that can find you, try and build some deep relationships with them. They need to be crystal clear on what type of candidate you need. And that comes by building a good relationship with them. The second uh, thing that I want to mention is that recruiters are particularly good at headhunting. So finding candidates that is, uh, you know, happy in their job, performing well, that's not really looking for something else. And they're very uh, good at finding those candidates for you. So next option is speed dating. Uh, these days, sites like Tinder, I mean OfferZen, helps you to quickly vet over 250 software engineers. Last time I checked, and every uh, Monday there's new candidates. So I want to give you my pro tips for being successful at OfferZen. So new candidates, like I said, is released every Monday uh, morning on OfferZen. So effectively, that starts a race between all the companies. If your hiring process takes two weeks and there's another company that's their hiring process takes a week, you've lost the race. If you both have a, a, a two week hiring process and they look at the, the candidate, approach the candidate on a Monday and you look at them on Thursday, you lose the race. So speed really matters when it comes to approaching candidates uh, on offers in. So that's why smaller companies typically do a little bit better here because they're more flexible uh, and they can get the process done uh, quicker. Also, just remember, when you approach a candidate on OfferZen, be sure to include the story section of your killer spec just to really sell them on the company. Now, if you feel you don't really need help in the uh, dating department uh, and you just want to meet somebody on your own, there's still a lot of stuff that you can do. Um, for instance, you can seek referrals from uh, your own network, and that includes current and past employees. Uh, you can post your killer spec on job sites, including the job listings channel in ZA uh, Tech. And don't forget about the good old uh, careers page on your site. And obviously community involvement, like uh, DevCon, uh, giving talks, sponsorships, hackathons, meetups, a very effective way to just get your brand out there. Um, but something that's becoming uh, more relevant these days is social media. They're becoming a big player, uh, a space for you to show off uh, not only your company brand, but also your employer brand. So by showcasing your company, and providing a constant stream of content that balances business and employer content, you can start to turn heads online. Uh, this is also Booking's preferred method. Um, the combination of engaging employer brand and dedicated in-house recruitment is eye-catching to say the least. This strategy can be very successful. Even some local companies like Derivco is having success with it. But don't kid yourself. 
Uh, it takes a lot of elbow grease and business buy-in to uh, and consistency over time to build a solid employer brand. You can also check out Life at Cars on Instagram, where we are trying to give our employee employer brand a bit of exposure. Okay, so the last step in your hiring strategy uh, is the interview process itself. So you've got your killer spec, you've put it out there. Hopefully, if you've done your job well, you start getting CVs that's streaming in. So I'm just going to take you over sort of the core steps that we've developed at Cars. Um, not to say you must do all of them, just to give you a little bit of an idea of what's actually possible. And it'll differ for every uh, organization. So on CVs, uh, it's very difficult if you discard degrees and years of experience in tech stacks to find anything really valuable out of a CV. So in my experience, I just try to see if the candidate is sort of ballpark relative to my killer spec. Um, I will say this though, if the candidate writes I in a lower case, then I consider it a syntax error and I can't pass the CV any further. So that's instant rejection. Uh, Cause after all, checking details is one of our core requirements um, for dev at cars. We also use a situational judgment test. Um, and this is something we use to check culture early on in the process. And I believe aligning candidates with your culture um, has a big impact on your churn rate in the long term. So how does uh, SJT work? So for each of the critical competencies at CARS, we have to find a situation where a candidate might exhibit um, this competency. For instance, if you're a dev at CARS, you're required to work closely with the product division. Uh, you've noticed uh, that you could contribute some ideas to a task that they are working on. However, if you were to help them, you would have to put aside your own work that also has a tight deadline to help them out. You know that your insight could add value, but if you don't help them, they will reach the same conclusion as you eventually. Describe what you would do and think in this situation. So we ask all of our devs this question, how would they handle it? Uh, we combine their answers uh, to produce the car's way of handling these situations, basically our culture. And when we write, then we write four equally valid uh, uh, answers to this uh, scenario that is sort of incrementally further away from our culture, uh, where sort of the extreme is sort of the opposite of our culture. And for this specific example, the, we were looking at teamwork. Does this candidate favor teamwork versus productivity? Both are fine, but the car's way is teamwork, and we really want to hire and promote that. Um, it's not just lip service. So then we give this guy, uh, you know, candidates this test, and this gives us an excellent gauge to, you know, how close they are to our culture. So the next step is a quick screening call. Um, so the idea here is to engage with the candidate as quickly as possible. This is also booking's preferred way to do a quick uh, screening call. Um, during this call, I like to do three things. I like to ask the candidate questions about their career and where they're heading. Uh, also, just to make sure we're on the same page. Uh, then I like to tell the car story to get some more buy-in from them. Because in the next step, I'm gonna ask them uh, to do a technical assessment and, and offer up their, their free time. Um, then I also ask one or two technical questions just to sanity check the candidate. Um, I like to ask this optimization question. I ask them, let's say you have a function, you need to optimize it down from 10 seconds to two seconds, what would you do? Then I ask them the same for an API endpoint and for a web page that loads uh, uh, in 10 seconds, you need to load in two seconds. And uh, then you might get an answer like, you know, for the function question, well, just use a different language or framework, um, which wouldn't be my first uh, optimization um, step. But okay, what about an API endpoint? Well, I would reboot the system. Okay, 
Uh, what about the web page that's loading slowly? Again, it might say something like, and this is actual answers that I've gotten. Um, <clears throat> uh, you can use a different framework and it'll load faster. And of course you can reboot the system again. Okay, thank you very much for, for your time. Um, a pro tip for, for screening calls is I would recommend the software Canonly. Uh, it just helps you to schedule meetings without the back and forth uh, of emails, which uh, helps a lot. Okay, then we get to the technical assessment. The bane of all software devs is even worse than Internet Explorer. Um, the booking way is to do an online test with engineers. Don't quite like this. Uh, it's a bit of an artificial environment. Uh, they do give sort of real world problems to solve that you would typically encounter. Um, and the code that you write with them online doesn't have to be perfect, which is also a good thing. Um, but still, I don't like this approach. Uh, don't feel like speed and that pressure, pressure situation mixes well uh, with thinking. That's not really uh, the cause way. Um, so at cars, we try to turn this test into a positive. So instead of filtering candidates on degrees or technical experience, we want to give them a shot to show off their talent. Um, so to achieve this, we follow just one rule and that is keep it humane. Okay. Um, this means that our test is a takeaway, a take home test that you can spend one week on. Um, so no time off work. Um, you can, it's also real world because you can work on your own machine, your own compilers and the internet you can also use. Um, and then we give you a general problem. So you don't need special B trees or anything to come up with the, the solution. Um, so at cars, we've experimented over, over the, the years with different types of tests. Uh, initially, we just had a PHP test with 20 odd questions, um, but we didn't really feel like we were, um, you know, learning anything about the candidates' competencies, more about their random PHP knowledge. Um, so then we moved on to a closure test. Um, this test was to build a view vehicle page, but the catch was that um, we give you some initial code to work with, um, but it's all closure. So you might think that's a bit crazy, but the idea there was to see if they are willing to learn and able to learn something quickly. Um, this test arguably worked really well. Um, we got some really good candidates through that, but generally people was, we felt like people was a bit intimidated by, by it and they often sort of uh, quit or didn't do the test um, and we felt we were losing out on a bit of talent there. Also, if you know, you're know approaching candidates on OfferZen and they get five dev tests, the one that requires them to learn closure is probably the one they're gonna leave for last. So, you know, to have our dev test be competitive, uh, we went back to our rule about keeping it humane. So these days, um, our test, uh, you can do in any language um, and you don't need any special knowledge to actually complete the test. However, we do emphasize correctness of the program, which is again one of our core capabilities uh, of this position, uh, checking details. Okay, so the next step is the face-to-face, -face, which is a really critical step. So I've um, I want to give you some tips for the face-to-face -face when you come out of lockdown. Some nice options for your mask. Also helps uh, with any biases you might have, especially the last one. Um, so, like I said, this is a really critical step. And, uh, you know, sometimes you fly people up from Cape Town or whatever, and, you know, then they drop the ball. Uh, like the guy we innocently asked, you know, so what do you do in your spare time when you aren't coding? He's like, I drink. We all burst out laughing and it's and we ask him, you drink? Yeah, I drink a lot. Okay, well, thanks for coming through. So 
typically our interviews consisted of random questions like that and then we sort of subjectively try and decide how we feel about the candidate uh, a lot of hiring managers actually pride themselves in their ability to read a candidate uh, during an interview like this on face-to-face -face interviews Malcolm Gladwell in his latest book talking to strangers says that based on his research there is very little evidence that we are accurately able to evaluate candidates that first day, particularly to predict their long-term contributions to an organization. So instead, these days at CARS, we follow a competency-based interview format. Uh, similar to the SJT, we ask candidates questions uh, based on, their competen on the competencies required for the position. For instance, we'll ask them, as a developer, ensuring that your output is of high quality without mistakes is important. So describe to us the process that you follow to ensure that your work is as accurate as possible. Um, so then we're looking for, you know, how in depth can they, can it answer this question? How many examples can they give? So a bad answer would just be, I never had er any errors in my code or I just tested. it. Um, that would just give you a one out of five score. A better answer, uh, would be more thorough and give specific examples. For instance, I do unit testing, we do code reviews, uh, a test in a staging environment, uh, things like that. That will give you sort of a five out of five score. And this allows us to evaluate candidates in a more consistent and objective way. Obviously, red flags can still jump out, uh, like the candidate that took 45 minutes to answer the question, tell us a bit uh, more about yourself. Um, so yeah, it, there is some flexibility in that as well. Um, the last uh, step before we make an offer uh, is to do a psychometric test. Um, again, we keep it humane. It's a link that we send you and you can do it in 40 uh, minutes or so at home. Um, and this just gives us uh, a little bit of a picture of who you are and how you will fit in with our team. So we've done this uh, with our team. We've profiled them. Uh, we've identified our strengths and our areas of improvement so that when we hire people, we can hire uh, people that complement the team, not frustrate us. For instance, um, you know, you can see there certain areas highlighted. So we would typically try and find somebody close to uh, those individuals. If we, for instance, suddenly have an extreme influencer, that would cause a lot of friction uh, and stress in the team. Uh, also, when looking at areas of improvement, so I mean, directing people is not really important for a, a single dev, nor is interacting with people so important. Uh, but maybe we say, look, producing output is something that we really want to focus on. So then we can hire somebody that is a little bit more um, biased towards action, um, but not so much that they just spew out code without actually thinking about it. Um, yeah. So the last part after you've done all of this is the offer. Um, so the only thing I want to say here is be quick. If you've decided you want a candidate, then drop the contract as quickly as possible. Preferably have a template ready um, that you can just send out. Arguably last year, we uh, lost a candidate that accepted another offer while we were still trying to get his paperwork uh, in order. So you don't want to go through all of this effort and just to experience the sting of being rejected uh, um, without even being able to, to keep your offer, trust me. In summary, we've looked at creating an internationally competitive offering where you tell your company's story, where you hire evergreen talent that fits in with your company instead of degrees and expertise that become stale. We've, we've examined various hiring uh, strategies from recruiters to office end to social media and how you can capitalize on each uh, to access the best talent in the market. Most importantly, we've dissected the interview process and we noted that having a lean and humane process will give you a competitive advantage compared to other hiring companies. I hope I have shown you how to be successful at hiring outstanding local talent before they head overseas.
because without world-class talent, we can't build world-class teams and we won't build any world-class products and we definitely won't power our country forward. Thank you. Hi guys, uh, thanks for joining me on my uh, talk today. Uh, it was really to prepare for it um, and interacting with you guys on Slack. Um, I just want to sort of address some of the conversation that's, that's going on there. Uh, firstly, sort of booking.com. Um, I think the reason why I chose them is because they, their process is so public and so visible and they are relevant even in our environment. Um, and yeah, on their, on their chin rate, uh, I have heard that a lot of people just sort of go there because it's very sort of um, easy to, 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 to um, immigrate there. They help you a lot to get relocated. And then, you know, after a short while, they sort of move on to uh, companies where their culture sort of fits better. Uh, we guys were saying they, they actually have a really old stagnant culture and not, you know, very risk averse and things like that. So I do feel there is some truth that people, you know, looking for uh, uh, more, you know, energetic environment. But I think that's the challenge that, that every company faces your employee brand versus the reality. And I think uh, a lot of companies uh, is very bad at selling their, their, their culture, even though they have a cool culture or they oversell their culture as being really awesome, but then it's very enterprisey uh, or, or very, very stagnant and not really interesting. Um, another question I got uh, from um, Samantha is whether I would consider um, a devs code on GitHub. Uh, I think I would definitely consider that as well. Um, I think the, 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 the main problems there is that not everybody has code on GitHub. And then it's very difficult to compare when I'm looking at, you know, every week looking at a test, uh, I get a very good feel for where the, um, uh, the common uh, problem areas are. And it's very easy for me to sort of pick that out and compare the different tests. Where if I look at something on GitHub, maybe I don't understand really what I'm looking at. It might look uh, impressive, um, but maybe, you know, it's really uh, quite straightforward. So I think just having a, a test helps to just uh, standardize the, the um, process by which I uh, look at these, these, these uh, candidates. But definitely if a guy has something on, if somebody has something on GitHub, I think that's always uh, good to, to, to look at that. Um, then Graham asked sort of uh, regarding South Africans and how they value culture over salary. Um, and I, I sort of agree with the general conversation there that, uh, you know, when you're young, sort of money speaks uh, and you've got, you know, uh, study loans to pay off and things like that. So then, you know, you, you very easily get sucked into the highest paid company, which is typically banks and large enterprises or large dev houses. Um, and, and, and you're not so focused on, on the culture. I think uh, when you become a bit older, more experienced, uh, provided you, you good at what you do, you have the luxury of becoming a little bit more discerning and, and trying to pick work. And, and, and it's not only the culture, but also the type of work that you're doing there that I think is, is important. So I don't really have a, a, a perfect answer there, but I do get the feeling that, that generally, um, you know, the younger devs are lured uh, with, with uh, salaries from, from these big enterprises. Um, then Zander uh, asked sort of about the, this, um, the SJT or, or the, yeah, um, about, you know, junior people, you know, do they maybe not know uh, you know, or, or they've been conditioned by the previous companies of what is the correct thing to do. Um, I think that is a, a, a risk um, that, that, you know, you can sort of classify somebody incorrectly. I think that um, we do ask a, a variety of questions and generally actually um, so far we've, we've only recently started using it and uh, a lot of the candidates actually um, fit in better with us than our existing people you know so that doesn't mean that we've got to kick out our existing guys out it just means that um you know we can move the team in the in the culture that we really want uh to go over a long time um 
let's see if there's if there's anything else um um Willem is asking, uh, what would you approach? Uh, what approach would you recommend for getting uh, new devs? Uh, if you have a good culture and story, uh, but your code base is relatively old, uh, that's a tricky one. Um, but I think that um, your story and your your purpose, your culture, that should really transcend your code base. And if people are excited to work there, and and the the right people are there. The actual code base is not, you know, the big issue. You know, it, obviously, if it's a horrible code base that's a big mess, that is sort of a different problem. But I don't think like we need to lure people in with fancy tech or the latest tech. Um, I think that's actually a mistake. And I would, you know, downplay that a little bit and rather say, well, what are we trying to achieve? What tools are we trying to, to build here? Cool. Thanks, guys. Um, I think I think that's sort of sort of it. Um, yeah. Thanks for for joining me on the on this uh, talk and track today. Appreciate it.